Good afternoon, my name, oh, stop. So let's start with Dana. Good afternoon, my name is Steve Seidel, and today we are going to discuss about Megaprint. Megaprint Corporation supplies large format banner for venues since over 50 years. They are active in US, Canada, in Spain, and Ireland. And that's the reason why we are going to enable multi-language. To support multi-language, we are going to use custom label, translation workbench, multiple email, as well as doc template. I made the assumption that report and dashboard can be done in English only. For the community, as we are going to use a community, I plan to have a custom logging page, a custom registration page, and to use audience as well as page variation. I will use also the language picker and translate the whole community with the import export function. About the currency, I will enable advanced multi-currency as we are going to need dated exchange rate. The audience for this project will be for a customer, our partner, the venue, internal, internal. it will be a typical B2B2B project. The pain point, there are a lot of, but the main one are authentication process are error prone. The termination of user is not working well, and the deployment is also error prone, and we need to fix this. The goal for the project is, uh, is to align the process, to automate as far as possible, and to allow the scalability in the future. This is one of the reasons why I choose a single route approach. We have no legal or compliance issue. We have no large data volume that we couldn't handle. We, have, we would like to have a global support as well as a global reporting. We will have a 360 degree view over all the country as some of the customer are multi-country and we did not have any limit that uh, we did not reach any limit. The approach for this project would be a great fill approach. It will allow us to continue working during the development, to have less time pressure, the scalability will be better and very important, we, we do not have any technical debt. On the risk and assumption side, we will have multiple systems. And I'm going to involve and to use an ESP to orchestrate all of them. More for this later. We will have multiple systems and so also multiple team, external team, but also internal team. And we need to onboard it in our center of excellence to let it be part of the program and to show them the best practice. I plan to have also some mobile app. The mobile app will be defined by external team. It's why I will also onboard it in the center of excellence, as well as a close follow up on the timing, and they will be part of the program. So I will show them also the best practice. We will have some large data volume. I will show how we are going to solve this, but mainly it will be about indexing, scanning table, and a very strong archiving strategy. On an assumption, payment gateway already exists and can be implemented, integrated with Salesforce. So we don't need a new payment gateway. All the country specific variation can be handled with record type, page layout, pick list value, with the lead sales, as well as support process and with dynamic form. This concludes the introduction and I will start with our actor and licenses. First of all, we will have uh, the, rep, uh, the representative for manage for, for partner, the manager on the top and then below, then we will have the partner reps. Both of them are going to use sales clause with the Okta. Well, why? Because we need a sales operation, we work on account, and that is the justification for them. We will have technician as well as technician manager, which are both going to work with service cloud and Okta. For the technician, I will give them also digital engagement because they need to be available over multi-channel. The other reason why is that we are going to work mainly in a service part where cases will be needed assignment, as well as the console. On the even rep, uh, even reps, I plan to give them sales cloud as well as Okta, because they will work with leads as well as sales operation. We will also have some external actor. First of all, we will have the venue operator admin, which will be a special kind of venue operator. He will create user. He might have some enhanced sharing. I will own the account. It's why you receive the CC plus license. The venue operator standard will only be a CC. You know, do not need any reporting or enhanced sharing. And at least our customer will be CC. They will, will not need any reporting and we do not have any enhanced sharing. I will use some add-on license. I will um, explain which one. Copado will, will uh, act as a release manager, Titan DXP as a doc generation, as well as e-sign, as well as form. Jira will use, will use for ticketing, Confluence for all the requirement, CRM analytic for um, 
on reporting. Salesforce Connect will be connected with ESP allowing to an external object, digital engagement to be available over multiple channel, and Okta will be used for to, as an IDP. We have um uh, we can reach onto 70, 70, 70, 20, uh, 720 million reports, which will allow us to be uh, to have enough space in the system and the file list about 24,000 gigabytes. Most of the data will be saved externally. That's why I don't see here any issue. Let me start now with the raw hierarchy. At the top, we will have the CEO. Below them, we will have the three manager, the partner reps manager, which will be responsible at the country level. And below them, we will have the partner reps. And at the bottom, we will have the venue operator administrator. The CC user are not going to be there as they do not have a role. Technician manager at country level, and then below them we have the technician, and uh, a large but not least the sales as well, event reps manager with below him the sales and event reps. This concludes the actor and licenses, and I will now start with the system landscape. First of all, most of the leads are going to come over the website. We will have approximately 1,000 per day which are coming in. I did think about that bullet, but we have a limitation of, of um, from 500 per day. It's why I propose is to use Titan DXP to integrate with Salesforce. Titan DSP will be integrated with the website. It will use the web server flow for authentication and will be protected with recapture. It will push the lead directly inside Salesforce where we are going to use Sales Cloud to manage them and transform them in account contact and opportunity. For managing all the cases, we are going to use Service Cloud, which is here, as well as digital engagement, as I mentioned before. To allow our customer to see their own data in the system, I plan to enable Experience Cloud. Experience Cloud will generate two communities. First of all, the customer community, which will also be available on the go over the mobile publisher. The mobile publisher will be authenticated with the web server flow with Pixie and partially with the OIDC. For the for um, our for our venue partner, we are going to have the venue community, which will be uh, related to the hybrid app. Hybrid app will be uh, will be um, will come will be authenticated through the web server flow with Pixie as well as SAML for the internal. I will also make the use of files for the contract for uh, for all the document that we are going to generate inside Salesforce. I will make the use of um, CRM analytic as well as standard report and dashboard. My domain is enabled by default, but it's still needed. And then I will make the use of three different packets, app exchange package, because the time to market will be much faster and the total cost of ownership also. First of all, the Titan DXP, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to use it to create form, allowing to manage the, uh, the leads but also for documentation, doc generation, as well as, um, as X signature. Copado will be our release manager, and we will have here X5 Pro for surfacing files inside Salesforce. I would also provide the possibility to the user to do a social sign on for our, our customer. For that, I will, end, uh, I will adapt the rec handler and create multiple authorization provider, authentication provider, sorry. Um, here in the middle, we, see, we are going to see two different, very important tools. The first one will be an enterprise service bus. It will be secure with Jot, Baron Token Flow, with reverse proxy, as well as multi TLS, which need to be enabled for the Salesforce support and be assigned to the uh, API user only. The um, ESP will uh, avoid any point to point connection and will uh, allow us to take the logic away from the system. It will support the rest, so as well as by your protocol. It will be integrated with our SAP system, allowing a communication between Salesforce and SAP, as well as to the, through the CID system. We are going to use also an ETL, ETL for extract, transform, and load tool. It will be protected with multi-TLS again, but this time Salesforce will enforce the multi-TLS. For the authentication, for, we are going to use the uh, JotBear and Torkel flow. It will support the REST protocol for all the file and the bulk for all the data. I plan also to have a data warehouse where we are going to archive all the needed, uh, all the files which are not uh, used for the business anymore, but could, keep, uh, could be for interest for at a later point. 
We will have the payment gateway for doing all other payment. It will be integrated directly with the ESP. Then the MS Dynamics will be retired. We see it through the green arrow. We are going to import all the data through the ETL. The three Salesforce are going to be retired also. As I mentioned, I would like to start with the Greenfield approach. And at least we will have here Google Maps for showing maps inside Salesforce will be related to the ESP and our identity component. First of all, the Active Directory, which will act as an identity store, and Okta, which will act as an IDP. It will be protected with a multi, multi, um, multi, multi MFA and will support SAML for authentication. And the provisioning and deprovisioning will be done via the REST API. It's the reason why we are also going to create um, to create a connected app in Salesforce around the access of Okta Direct inside Salesforce. This concludes the system landscape, and I will start now with the data model. At the core, uh, at the beginning, we have again our leads. Our leads are going to come inside the system and at some point to be converted inside an account, contact, as well as an opportunity. To support opportunity as well as order, we will have price book, price book entry, as well as product. Once the opportunity is, is um, closed one, we are going to create an order out of it. To support a prepayment, we are going to use two custom objects. First of all, a, a payment method, which will be tokenized as we do not want uh, to save uh, credit card data inside Salesforce, and a transaction which will be related to the order and um, to confirm that the payment was done. Then to have uh, to, to represent the venue, we are going to have a venue custom object, which will be there. The venue will be related with event as multiple events can be at the same venue. And to represent the product based on for pair venue, I plan to have a junction object banner venue, which will allow us to represent not to represent all the products which are going to be sell inside any venue. Then we will have our print location, which will be assigned to a venue, but also to a work order, which represents the, the work to be done. And to assign multiple user to the print location, I plan to have the location team object. We will have also some cases for all the, uh, the for all the requests of the customer, as well as the entitlement object to manage the timing. We can see all, uh, uh, up there two external objects, one the case which are archived, as well as the order which are archived. For both, we need to do some reporting on it. It's why I propose to use the uh, to have this both um, to have both external object. Let's conclude the data model, and now let's start. Sorry. With the requirement, first of all, we need to know they have some general pain point, and I would like to mention the shortly the solution. Authentication is a lengthy and error prone manual process. This is the reason why we are going to use Okta. Okta can be integrated with multiple systems and allow to do provisioning as well as day provisioning means one place to manage all the user. And this way is also allow us to solve the second problem is that once the user are terminated, they won't have access anymore to any system. We have also an error-prone deployment process. We will see later on which process, how we are going to handle this, but I propose it to us with a source-driven approach. Copado will be the release manager and deploy automatically to the different um, to the different branches. And especially we will use automatic regression testing to be sure that we don't not have any issue in production at the later point. Sorry. Let me now start with the venue onboarding. The representative can call on venue prospect and negotiate preferred print partner relationship. First of all, to do so, I will assign the sales rep the sales cloud licenses. Then negotiation will be probably on the phone and I made the assumption that we can handle this with this account status. I would propose to do news account, ongoing stack account, and once the account is, um, is validated, we are going to have it uh, status as partner. Furthermore, I will assign a special record type to the account, which will be venue. It will allow to the difference between customer as well as partner. We will have venue operator, 60,000 uh, total, which work with a the technician. There we will refer to client access to ban banner installation. 
First of all, I will create an activate venue operator as account and assign to the, uh, to the contact the CC license for the venue operator. Not for all of them, as I mentioned at the beginning, but only for the admin one. The non-admin will receive the CC license. Then the technician service, uh, the technician will receive the service cloud license. I made the assumption that the repair is not done in Salesforce and we will do not mention this process here. Assistance will be done on place and if they need more help, they are going to create a case, but this process will come later. We are going to create an administrative user that can add and manage additional user at the venue. Again, it will be uh, the venue administrator will receive the CC license for the creation of new user and we will assign the CC, uh, the CC license for standard user. We might have up to 20 active users per account and we need to limit this. To also, I propose here for this to create an Apex rollup to count how many user or account are related to a uh, uh, contact, sorry, are related to the account. A validation rule will block the creation of new contact and or user. I plan also to have a custom field to maintain the maximum number of, um, of user which can be created. And I will secure this field with a field level security, which will be available only for the partner sales reps. The next one is the representative will assign a new venue to a primary print location. And the need for this, a visual that adds in the selection. As I remember, we have here the print location and we have the venue here. I plan here to create a, quest, a quick action on account and to start a Lightning Web component with an Apex controller. This Lightning, uh, Lightning Web component will help us, first of all, if we show a, a map from Google Map, and to show this map, we need to create an integration between, between, Google, oops, sorry, between Google Maps as well as Salesforce to show the maps. It will be a um, remote process invocation request and reply and be started from an Apex callout. Why request and reply? Because we need to see the result immediately. The print technician create venue rendering during the onboarding process and assign to one or more of the 500 print location. So, Although the technician will need the service cloud licenses, we will use the print location to represent the print location and use the location team to assign the user to the print location, as we might have one or more technician pre print location. But this why the reason why this object is here. The onboarding process should facilitate the assignment of an available technician. Let's think a couple of seconds ago, we are going to use the Lightning Web component, not only to show the map, but also to propose a technician or to show the available, available technician and to associate it with the location. And this can be then done via the Lightning Web component. I propose also to use a custom field for defining a role at um, technician as the location team. That will allow us to be a little bit more granular if we want to have different um, uh, different world inside the location team. The new rendering are created in a custom computer aided system CID and configured to manage print job at each print location. I made the assumption first for this that the CID will support REST and can be integrated with our ESP, which is here. So the communication will be done between both. Partner sales rep can view all other partner accounts, but only edit their own account. I plan here to create a criteria based sharing rules with, um, with all the partner sales rep and to put the criteria and show me only the venue for, all, for their own account. They will be able to edit it as they are owner of the account. That's what about onboarding the partner. Now let's start the selling. To sell, um, to sell for the event, we will have a website to show example of writing for all the venue along with option and download will require submission and we might have up to more than thousand daily uh, thousand inquiry per day. First of all, I plan to use the existing page and to adapt it if needed, but do not integrate it with Salesforce except through the Titan DXP. Titan DXP will show a form which will be embedded inside the web page. The Titan DXP will be uh, will do a remote call, uh, call in over the REST API and we be, uh, will be use the web server flow uh, for communication. I will also protect it through the recapture. 
to allow and, and to, to avoid any spam. Search resp representatives respond to information requests from the website. We have um, we will have a lot of uh, requests from the website as we saw, and I plan here to assign um, the rep sales um, the cl sales cloud license. Sorry, the customer who average have two event annually at venue and order large large um, banner from Megaprint. First of all, the the customer will receive the CC license as I already explained, and I plan to use order as well as venue banner for ordering. Customer inquiry are going to be assigned to the event sales representative who previously worked on event. I will use here a record triggered flow to assign based on the account owner. If the account owner is, rec is recognized, it will automatically be assigned to the, um, to the sales rep who owns the account. If it's not existing, then I'm going to create a queue based on country and assign then uh, and let the, the um, unless the sales representative picked the, the leads out. I did consider territory term management, but I think for the record triggered full will be enough. If the referral is not being picked within 24 hours, the management is responsible for allocating. I will use a schedule flow to generate a notification to the management via email. Possibly it could be also done via um, in-app notification if required to inform the management that some of the, the some of the referral has not been picked up. The representative start working by sending an email with link to the customer. Then they would like to see when the customer open the file so that they can do a, a, call, a phone call. I will use an email template and we share the data over the CRM content management. Then I will use a record trigger flow on content delivery and as soon as that is changing, I will notify the ref, the reps over an email. On interest, we are going to convert the lead inside an account, contact, as well as an opportunity. I will then assign the record type customer for this account and assign the CC license to the user. To drive consistency into the event sales process and giving guidance, I plan to use the sales process, which might vary uh, um, through the country as well as the path. The path we allow to know every, um, exactly what to be done at every step. Representatives should be able to quickly limit the view to only show banner option for the specific venue. Here on opportunity, which is the starting point for the negotiation before the order, I will use a um, quick action on opportunity with a lighting back component with an Apex controller. The Apex controller will show only the possible match related to the venue so that the representative should not search for uh, too long. Image on file for previews even should be available. This year, this system can export a list of image location on the network drive. I will plan here X file pro to surface the files directly in Salesforce. I made the assumption that the CRD system provide a folder based on a Salesforce ID, so we can match both. We were onboarding customer, and now we are going to do some order. First of all, I would like to mention we have two SAP system which are here. The one, the both, uh, the both system are now sourced or true for account as well for ERP data globally. One is used for the order transaction. I propose to maintain the both system to integrate them with the ESP. I propose also to make Salesforce Truth of Truth for account as well as contact and the SAP system source of truth for all the order. The SAP system, of course, duplicate and data consistency issue. Let me switch to my data migration slide to explain how I plan to handle this. We are going to have here multiple systems that we are going to import inside Salesforce. First of all, the three Salesforce will be imported to the ETL. We will use the bulk API for this. MX Dynamic, I mean, there's something we can import over the REST API, Active Directory over the REST API, and the SAP system over the REST API. The ETL will be a platform, and we are going to leverage the staging database with two different layers. First of all, a mapping layer, which will allow us to do um, to create, uh, to do the linking of the external ID between all the system and to create a golden record at the end. And the transformation layer, which will allow it to clean the record, to depart up the record, to standardize the record. I will work here um, together with the data architect to have the best quality possible. Once everything is done, 
we are going to import the user inside Okta to avoid the mass, uh, mass thinking at the beginning, all inactive or in an unused record for the product, uh, for the system now or for the business now will be straight, will go straight to the data warehouse. And the data, data need for the business will be import in Salesforce. It will be an, uh, a subset in quality sandbox for the sanity check. It will be a subset in SIT for quality check. I will do a full load in UIT for the control. And at least short before go live, I will do a full load plus the delta in production. During the import, I propose to use the bulk API for data, the REST API for file. Again, we are going to use the link to external uh, ID, allowing to link multiple uh, uh, record together. I will ask Salesforce support to um, defer the sharing. I will deactivate trigger automation as well as validation role. And then once uh, all the data are done, I plan also to um, enable parallel sh uh, sharing calculation. There will also the need to populate um, our audit field set date as well as to import inactive user or to relate a record with inactive user. And for this purpose, I will assign the set audit file permission to the import user. It will allow us to have a perfect quality and clean data for starting the project. I will go again uh, further, Megaprint print expect all the system to have option for log out currency as well as USD, uh, USD and the exchange rate are stored in SAP. First of all, I will enable advanced multi-currency in Salesforce. And I will let SAP make a remote call in over the ESP to update the exchange rate uh, every month. I make the assumption that all the other systems are already connected. Some customers are required to put deposit down via the credit card for something about 20%. For this purpose, I will create a quick action on order, which will allow the, the, the user respective the customer to make a payment. The quick action will trigger a Lightning Web component with an Apex controller. The Apex controller will make um, a call out to, to the payment gateway over the ESP. It will be a remote process invocation, request and reply as the user need to see immediately if the payment was successful or not. We will also save the credit card data in the system. The data should not be accessible to any end user. The credit card data will, are going to be tokenized on the payment method object as we want to remain PCI compliant. The 20 deposit wave can be waived automatically if there are no outstanding unpaid invoice. As you remember, we are now in a Lightning Web component and apply to use the same Lightning Web component to do the check if we need a 20 person deposit or not. To do the check, we are going to do um, a remote calling from Salesforce, uh, remote process invocation from Salesforce to SAP over the ESP. It will be again a, re a request and reply as we need to see the result immediately. The sales rep management can change a customer premium status but nobody else. I will protect the premium field status with a field level security and assign the permission only to the sales reps management. The CRM instance connect to SAP to submit order. Salesforce also will connect to the, sales, uh, to the uh, CID system as well as to SAP. To do so, I will use the ESP to orchestrate sync and uh, to orchestrate the sync as well as the creation of order. The appropriate system should be notified of each close date. Now that we have the orchestration, we need to create an integration between Salesforce and SAP. It will be a record triggered flow on, on, on order change, which will generate a platform event. The platform event will, will go over the ESP and the ESP will um, orchestrate a remote call in to get a line item, type of product, number, and so on. All the relevant data which need to be uh, sent to SAP for the invoicing. SAP has monthly scheduled downtime the last bit, uh, the, uh, that lasts between 24 and 72 hours. I did consider the PA platform capability, which might uh, last to 72 hours, but I propose to use the queuing capability of the NASP to manage this outage. The system should route closely to the print location associated with the venue. I have a lookup on, I have a lookup on order, which will allow me to do the right uh, to to do to route the order to the right venue, and um, so we we have the close deal related to the right uh, to the right venue. The representative should not have access to other team data. 
The data like account case opportunity order are private. We will use an honor based sharing mode to share the data based on the role, and it will allow um, to share the team's data um, at the role level. Customers should be able to optionally log in to the system using the existing Salesforce, LinkedIn, or Google credential. For the Salesforce, I plan to use uh, the web server flow with Pixie. For LinkedIn or Google, we will first of all create a, a social sign-on adapter Greg handler and use uh, the web server flow with OIDC. They would also like to use the mobile device. And for this, for the customer, I propose to use a mobile publisher as he has the best time to market as total cost of ownership. And I did not identify any requirement that would uh, that would suggest to use an hybrid app. Furthermore, to avoid to be constantly prompt for the authentication protocol, the web server flow will uh, will use the refresh token. So if we will, they will never ask again for retransmitting the password. Now that we have our customer on board, we are going to create the image. To create the image, um, we are going to. Uh, to do create some place order in the CID system and to discuss with the customer um, about the details. I propose here to use the chatter on order to save the information. And if needed, we can also create some custom fill. I did consider a custom object, but for I think that the chatter will contain all the needed information and we do not need to have a custom address for this purpose. The CID system leverage network storage array and provide unique a private stop folder export via a web-based UI for each event. I plan to, to use here a redirect link to redirect to the folders. Um, as we, I did not recognize the need to integrate this, this, inter, this, um, this UI with the Salesforce. It, I assume it's only for downloading the data and a redirect link will be um, enough. I did consider um, Canvas app, but I think we don't need to have it as it must not be integrated with Salesforce. The email take, uh, take, uh, they still email instruction via email with uh, image link, place order as other information. Instead of emailing, I would like to use the chatter for communication. As it's related to the order, we have everything in a central place. The order is sent to the customer to sign electronically and will include blueprint of the venue, image, place order, and so on. Here, I will use a quick action to start um, a screen flow on order. It will generate all the PDF with the help of Titan DXP with the doc generation tool. And we have all information is inside one PDF. And at the end, with Titan DXP, I will put the possibility to e-sign the document. As soon as we receive the document, which will be then e-signed, Titan, Titan DXP will update the start of the order. And with the help of the validation rule, I will lock the record. I did consider locking with Apex, but uh, the validation rule might provide more flexibility and can be manually uh, adjusted by an admin. To send the data to the SAP, I plan here to have the record triggered flow with a platform event. The record triggered flow will um, be sent as soon as the status of the uh, of the opt order is sent to locked. Then. Um, we will, it will be a remote process invocation fire and forget us, the user don't care about the status and the, so the ESP will do a remote call in to get again, all the related information which are necessary for SAP. Once everything is clear, we need to print and to print this document, I plan to use the work order. First of all, we will inform the CRD system. To inform the CRD system, I will first of all generate a work order based on the order, which will be triggered as soon as the status is changed to locked. Then the work order will be integrated with the CID. So Salesforce will be integrated with the CID. It will be a record, a record trigger flow with a platform event over the ESP. It will be a remote process invocation fire and forget, but the user don't need to, don't need to see the result. Again, the ESP will orchestrate to get all the related information. Once the CAD start working on, this, on the order or on the site on our work order, we are going to receive some update. And to mention this update inside Salesforce, I plan to have a CAD Salesforce integration, which will be then a remote call in over the ESP, which we then update our work order status. 
The system should indicate any print job in which will not meet the agreed ship by date. I made the assumption that the information routed for the CRD can be saved on a work order. As I mentioned before, it will be again CRD to Salesforce. It will be a remote call in over the ESP to update the order. We have some established development process that ensure the system will function as expected. That's not the case now. And it's exactly the time now to show you my development lifecycle slide. First of all, we are going to work with a service-driven development approach. The master branch will always be equal to the production. And then we will have a different branch where we are going to work by feature. Let, let me give you an example. The Lightning Web component that we deploy will first be in a backlog. Once it's, uh, we, when it, need, it will need to be go out, we are going to assign it to a dev. The dev will develop the product. We will do so unit test, Java unit test, as well as a static code analysis um, with the PMD. And then before deploying to the next branches, it will ask a quick call review to, to, uh, through a senior developer. In the quality, as soon as all the tests are done, we are going to do in a quality sandbox, which is a developer sandbox, all our tests, mean quality test, first data migration test, smoke test, as well as starting automatic regression testing with the help of Selenium and Copado. If all the tests are successful, we will deploy to the SIT branch. In the SIT, we are going to do system integration, data migration, uh, smoke test, as well as automatic regression testing again. All tests successful, next step in UIT. In UIT, we are going to do user acceptance tests. This time, some performance tests with Roadrunner, which we are going to announce a couple of weeks in advance, smoke tests, automatic regression testing, as well the big data migration testing. And then if all the tests are successful, we are going to deploy to production, where we'll still run some smoke tests. I will also have a scratch org um, for all fixed purpose where we'll, depending on the criticality, are going to deploy either to UIT and or to production. At least for supporting all this project, to all this process, I plan to use Jira for ticketing, Confluence for all the requirement, on backup for data masking, as well as data seeding, GitHub for um, as, um, as a source, and Copado for release manager. I would like also to mention, I would go uh, hybrid um, in an hybrid way. It means integration, mobile data migration will be rather um, um, a waterfall approach, while Salesforce will follow a more agile approach. Then a technician should be able to request help for other print location. To do so, I made the assumption this process is only in CID plus SAP. We don't need to reflect this. I did consider manual sharing of, um, of the work order, but it won't help us. To view all other print job in issue, I would like to add this record assigned to one of the active print location. I will give the view all on order work order in cases, and I will use Apex sharing for sharing it over the print location as all the objects are shared through the different lookup, and it will allow us to show them. Customers will only have access to their own order. I will have use order case um, work order, and everything will be private. And I will share the data over a sharing set over the account and the different object. For the venue operator, we should have access to all order, print job, and issue for the venue. I will use a Lightning Web component with an Apex controller to show the related record. It will be the best uh, UI possibility. I did consider Apex sharing, but we have only one CC plus as the order I uh, do not have a role. It's the reason why I propose to go with a Lightning Web component. The technician manager will view all print requests job in danger. Um, and we use a reporting on work order and let's transcribe them so they receive it automatically directly by email. For the installation, the venue operator as well the customer would like to be able to cache big image and blueprint on the device. For this purpose, I will use an hybrid app with the FDK, uh, Salesforce FDK allowing the caching of data. For managing the events and the separate workload, I will use report for the venue operator. As we have again CC and CC plus, I propose here to have a Lightning Web component with Apex controller to show the related data. I did consider reporting only for admin CC, but I made the assumption both are using this capability. Venue uh, 
Uh, if you arrive for a new op operation, a customer expects to be able to reach the technician via email, phone, text, and so on. We are going to use service clouds with digital engagement, console, bots, as well as live agent. Integration with Outlook as well as email is still considered as critical. It's why I will use Einstein activity capture, email to keys, as well as assign uh, the keys to a queue. Um, so they are still um, be sent to the relevant uh, technician. We have one hour initial response time for the print support and a notification which may be done via push notification or mobile device. I will use a case escalation rule. And on escalation of the case, I will use a record trigger flow to send an in-app notification. Resolving issue usually require collaboration. To resolve collaboration, I will use um, the case team. Review issue trend by print location and issue type. I plan here to use the location on a custom film or case as well as the queue for location and type. So uh, we will have multiple queue for assigning based on a different location. The sales rep should be able to view all customer issue. I will give the sales rep view all on all case. All issue story is considered relevant to look for trends and MS Dynamics integration um, uh, instance categories issue and will definitely, first of all, I mentioned are going to import all the case inside the data warehouse and make them available over the externals object. And I will work with the data architect to unify the course in a staging database. To import and assign inactive user to, uh, to record, I will assign the audit field permission to the import user. And then we have some requirement about expansion, yes. Priority is when you grow potential based on monthly referent trends. I will use a Lightning Web component to show the relevant data on demand as some of data will be in a data warehouse and order will be in Salesforce. And that will be also used by the partner venue operator for partnership part um, planning, sorry. Manager need to see the, to depth demand at the next five strategy country country to load with even trend data. In this point, I propose to use CRM analytic as we will have external data set and it might be cross-platform reporting. To help the SAP team to improve the velocity, the velocity, I made the assumption they do not use ESP now and I plan to, in, uh, to let them use the ESP to be more flexible and they do not need to change their integration all the time. I propose to work as far as possible an agile way of working and to let them get more support through the COE with prioritization, as well with more support on the testing with the QA team. The existing SAP requires frequent maintenance downtown, uh, downtime, sorry, is it, it's where we are going to use the capability of the queuing of the ESP. And to make bug fix, to make does the bug fix stay in production and does the fix to have not been overwritten? I mentioned we are going to use here to use here our this strategy where we will work on a left shift approach to manage this project. I plan to have at the top the executive sponsor, which are going to the CEO, the CFO, as well as COO. For the steering committee, I plan here to have the event partner as well as technician manager. The program manager will be, the program owner will be responsible for the whole COE, which is constituted of the data governance board for managing all the data issue, change control board for managing the prioritization of the ticket, change management for, for following up, quality for all the tests, legal and compliance as we are multi-country. Then for the design authority, I plan to have the technical architect, solution architect, and very important, the release manager. Then I will have a dev team internal, but also our SRT, SRP team, as well also our mobile team. And this will allow to make sure that this project will be a success. This concludes now the presentation, and I will open the floor to question. Thank you. Good. Nice. Good. Um, thank you very much, Steve, for the good presentation. It was very um very interested and can you please um go to the event sales and to the requirement number nine where you mentioned the x files pro as a solution of course. you mentioned x files pro as the solution to include the cid uh, cut uh, documents even say give me a second nine down there you go yes 
Um, and you, you, you mentioned X-Files Pro as the solution. Um, can you walk me through the capabilities of X-Files Pros and potential alternatives if X-Files Pros doesn't work? Um, X-Files Pro will allow, will allow us to connect Salesforce with a network drive and will allow us to, with, a, with the help of Lighty Web Component, to show the related data inside Salesforce and or the community. If this shouldn't work, I would need to know which kind of network drive it is. I would have a solution, for example, if I knew it's a Google Drive or SharePoint. Um, but if it's local network drive, I don't know any other solution. Mm. But thank you very much. That's from my side. Hermani, you go next. Sure. Uh, let's go to the general pain points. Of course. And in the general pain points, we have um, point number three. Yes. And um, so the what, what my understanding of the requirement is that they're looking for automating deployments to all environments. Yes. Uh, can you explain how Copado does that? Of course. We will Copado have here at the, at the um, automatic deployment tool. It means as soon as the tests are validated, Copado will automatic deploy to the next branches. I mean, we will start here at the, at the dev one org or the scratch org. If it, the tests are validated also through, um, um, through the senior developer, then we will be at the QA branch. From there, Copado will always run this check with automatic regression testing. And in all other checks are done, it will automatic deploy to the next branches. How will this work for other systems than Salesforce? Um, other, ses other system as Salesforce, um, I don't know if they might be integrated with uh, Copado or not. I don't know all the connector that I, uh, they have. I made the assumption that SAP have a connector for its Copado. If it's not true, we will need fi to find a way to integrate it um, with uh, with it um, auto um, with with via REST API. Okay, um, but the the requirement, what I understand that they need to automate deployments to all environments and integration yes. points. Um, my uh, my understanding is that this is everything else in relation to Salesforce as well. I understood so, the word environment as the branches and not as the system. It's why I choose Copado. In case we have, this is really all the environment mean the systems, then we could use another system uh, to do the deploy like GSET, which will, which will support SAP. But I'm not a GSET expert at all. Okay. Um, so let's suppose that the requirement is that we need to automate this to all the systems because they don't have Salesforce today yes. and they still have this pain point. What's your recommendation? As they have document and script, and as they are working with anti-based deployment, I assume we can integrate all the system with a release manager. As I don't know if Copado can do it, I will propose to use Gearset instead, which will support the system in creation. Okay, thank you. Slava? Steve, could you please uh, walk us through the mobile strategy that you have for this project? Yes, for for both or just for for the for the one. I have two mobile application now. The first one will be a mobile publisher for all our customer. The customer won't need any special capabilities. It's why I do not choose any hybrid or native solution. And I made the assumption mobile publisher will be enough means we are going to create mobile publisher in Salesforce, deploy it and let the, the customer use it. For our internal, as well as for the partner, there is some capability, uh, some requirement about caching the data, big data. And that can be as, uh, achieved with the standard Salesforce application. It's the reason why I propose to go with an hybrid app 
which will uh, you make the use of the Salesforce SDK for caching the file and the integration. Did that answer your question? Yes, yeah, thank you. And follow up on this also, there was a requirement for the push notifications. Could you walk us through that as well? Uh, I, I can't remember which one, but we can integrate a push notification with the standard, uh, with, with an hybrid app inside, and the push notification will be generated with the standard, with a flow, and sent directly to the mobile app. Yeah, I think it's under banner installation number five. We, if we can take a look and maybe if you can reiterate again. Yes, of course. Give me a second. Number five. Thank you. With a Salesforce SDK, we might be uh, we we are able to receive push notification direct inside the hybrid app. I don't see any uh, any any problem with this recommendation. Okay, good. Johan, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Um, I would ask you to uh, walk me through how you track the content of the emails as part of the banner image creation process. It's requirement number one, banner image creation. Could you please repeat your question? The requirement states that um, a lot of information are submitted via email yes. and then entered manually into the uh, CAD system. Can you walk me through one more time? how you store these information as the, from the emails. Okay. Thank you. I understand your question. Um, I made the assumption that the customer will have access to the order. The, on the order, we have the chatter feed enabled, and I would like the, the technician as well as the customer to chat over the chat related, uh, order over the chatter related to the order. If there are some more needed, like a special information in, in, in field, I, I propose also to use some custom field but I did not have enough data to create to mention which custom field should be created and which not. Is there a way of storing the emails it themselves on the object? I would not recommend to use email because um, I'd rather have directly the chatter enabled. An email will cause to have uh, the possibility not to be uh, to to be received. Email sent out of Salesforce are not uh, automatically um, received on the right time. It's why I would recommend to use the chatter. If we need to have the e email on the order, I would need to create an email handler to relate the email to the order. Is there an alternative how um, the print technicians can directly store emails from their email inbox in Salesforce? Yes, of course. It's the reason why I recommend to use Einstein activity capture and to let related it to the order or order record. Is there an alternative to Einstein activity capture, which gives more granular, granular control to the technician? I don't see for now. I would like to pass. Thank you. Hermani? Okay, so um, let's go to your, uh, or let's go to the um, data migration strategy. Of course. And um, with regards to this data migration strategy, it's mentioned specifically in the requirements that it's the SAP systems that uh, are creating duplicate records. Yes. So can you explain how this, uh, your data migration strategy gets rid of the duplicate records globally? Absolutely. First of all, we are going to import all the SAP data inside the ETL. With the help of the staging database, we are going to clean, uh, to dead up the, the record. Means we are going to merge them via an external ID. The goal of the process is to get one record at the point. 
and then to take Salesforce as the source of truth for account and contact. There, there were no information about um, duplicate on order. And once Salesforce is a source of truth of, uh, of account and contact, we will avoid further duplicate. Uh, so in which all systems are you going to load data? We are going to load the data um, in the ATL, in the staging base, and then to, re, uh, to reassign the data inside SAP so they have also the right golden record at the end. And it will be multiple IDs to which need to be merged together. Yes. And also, of course, Salesforce, which will be related to multiple record. Okay, so your, your plan is to do data migration then to Salesforce and to SAP. Yes, we need to. As we will, as we need to clean SAP system, we need at some point to merge the record in SAP. Otherwise, the duplicate will remain in SAP. Okay. Um, are there any other systems where you need to migrate the data to? Uh, uh, it was mentioned that the it was mentioned that the duplicate are effectively only in SAP. We might think also about the CID system which might also contain uh, some duplicate. It was not clear, but yes, it may be the, the, um, the um, CID system. So the requirement specifically says it's the SAP systems that are creating duplicates. Yes. So uh, at least to the way that I understand this, it means that um, the uh, other systems that are integrated with the SAP systems are getting duplicate records from them, each one. Uh, I I understand and I agree with you. In them in in this case, we need also to clean the CID system and to merge also the record there. The question I would then discuss it with the data architect. Would would do we really need to merge also the data in the CID system, or can we really keep them um, and then just relate the one to multiple CID uh, record? This must be uh, um, discussed with a, a data architect. How will you identify? the records uh, in each of the system? How do you connect each one of them in, in, in the other systems? We are going to use the, uh, we are going to use external ID and we have the possibility inside the staging database to relate multiple external ID together to create only one record, the golden record. Okay. Can I follow up there? It was yes, sure. No golden record is possible, Steve. Sorry? What if the records? What if no golden record is possible? What if the records have to stay separated, duplicate in the source systems in SAP? How? But you want to have one record in Salesforce. How would you handle that? Um, I see here two possibility. Either the uh, no, sorry, I see only one possibility. I could create multiple external. ID on the Salesforce record, which we uh, which we then can be managed through the ESPN or for further eventual also or the uh, ETL. But I will really push to have only one golden record instead of multiple. And I assume SAP is strong enough to allow the merging of different records. Um, again, how can you identify um, multiple golden records and multiple SAP systems from within Salesforce? Can you walk me through one more time? Sorry, I didn't catch it. Uh, I'm sorry, we will only have one golden record per system at the end. If SAP is not able to have only one record and you cannot merge, then we need to create multiple external ID on a Salesforce uh, record to allow the linking of multiple SAP record inside one Salesforce record. Did I answer your question? This was correct. Thank you very much. That answered my question. Sorry for not getting it the first time. Welcome. Um, can I still have another question, Hermani? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Go can, for it. Steve, can you please go to the data model? Was. And here, um, you manage the venue as a custom object. Is that correct? Yes. Um, is there any other um, other objects you could think of being using? 
There are multiple solutions. We could have used location. We could have used account itself. I didn't like the idea of account and the object location. Um, the object location, I'm not sure it's available for the, um, for a CC, uh, a CC user. I would need to check it. But other than this two, I don't see any other possibility. Okay, um, what would be one of the advantages if you use the account object instead of a custom object? I see only these advantages. The reason why I would use, uh, I'd rather use the, um, the venue object. The only advantage that we could have is that we would uh, benefit for an easier sharing because all the records are related to account. Okay. Good. Then Slava. Steve, I would like to ask you about the websites. Yes. I remember you mentioned uh, that the Titan will be installed on the uh, some website, yes. one of the existing, if I'm not wrong. And also you propose to use a community. So could you remind how are these two coexist and what is uh, for which purpose? Okay, of course. Um, Titan will exist only to create lead. It will be a kind of web to lead form. And we are going to embed it directly inside the web page. It will be secure through recapture and will be authenticated through the web server flow. Means once somebody is creating a lead through this form, it will act like a web to lead and create a lead inside Salesforce. We can apply also some more uh, rules like checking if the account is already existing and so on. The community on itself would not be available at the standard, standard uh, web page, but we'll, we are going to redirect to the community from the standard web page. I do not plan to use the community as the starting point for all the user, for all the guests, pardon. Okay, uh, and then I think there is a requirement about that they want to send follow-ups also to this uh, people who express their interest. How yes. do you solve that? As we are going to create leads through the web page to form Titan, the leads are going to be created in Salesforce. Once we have the lead inside Salesforce, we are going to send them via the lead record an email with the related link to the content, uh, to the CRM content and all the needed information with the email template. Did I answer your question? Yeah. And also additional, I want to understand your considerations a little more. Uh, why, why do you want to keep them separate? Why don't you want to have it, uh, for example, on Salesforce as Titan on community or rather also Lightning Web Component as additional okay. option? Um, I use Titan because uh, they have the best um, time to market, total cost of ownership, and I don't want to expose a Lightning Web Component uh, in the community to the guest. Furthermore, um, we have a limit of 1 million view per day, and I assume that they have much more view. It's also the reason why I propose to put everything inside the standard web page instead uh, as a community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Johan, Germani, would like to go next? Mm, I'm done. Germani? I can go next. Hmm? So let's go to the business requirement, uh, the requirement about the um, checking about the unpaid invoices for the deposit orders requirement uh, six. Yes. So walk me through your solution one more time. Of course. Um, it start earlier where, let's me, give me a second, please. Is regarding so, where it starts. We are going to start with um, on the order. On the order, we will have a quick action, which we start a lighting web component with an Apex controller. This Apex controller will be used to check, uh, to do the payment, first of all. And then before doing the payment, we will also use it to check in SAP if there are so outstanding unpaid invoice or not. 
and furthermore, if the status of the customer is set to premiere or not. So I mean, we need to check, is it premiere? And if yes, and there is no, um, and there is no uh, open uh, unpaid invoice, we do not need to check further, uh, we do not need to, um, to uh, request the money. Okay, uh, how does the check happen for the unpaid invoices? The Lightning VEC component will do um, a call out to uh, SAP over the ASP. It will be a remote process invocation, request and reply, as we need to see immediately the result. If we don't have this information, we cannot go ahead. How do we fulfill this requirement if the SAP is down? That's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> if this is really needed, then we will need to have a um, um, we will need to have an integration overnight or uh, once per day, which will sync the data to Salesforce. In this case, I would like to use the ETL to, um, to make the data synchronization between SAP uh, and Salesforce once a day. It does answer your question. So walk me through this new solution. Okay. How it works. If we do, if if the SAP system is done and we do not have the possibility to check it, I would recommend to use the ETL overnight to do um, to do an orchestration between SAP as well as Salesforce and to update the record inside Salesforce directly at the account level and said, oh, no unpaid invoice or paid invoice. To allow the flexibility, we could also uh, I would also suggest. To save this data in a in a hidden field and use it only if ESRP is down, so we have full flexibility. Okay, no further questions. I think I have the last one uh, from my side, minor one. If you could open, please, section of uh, when you onboarding and uh, requirement number four. Yes. So you're referring here to a custom field that you're going to be using. Where is it located and how they will be updating it? So we we will have two different fields. Both are going to be on the account. One will be um, an, an, an Apex rollup for all the content user. And it will still be updated as soon as a user is created. And then we will have a second one, which holds the maximum, might be 20 or more. And this field can be updated through the partner sales representative. And we will then have a validation to block the creation um, if, uh, the, the, the boss, uh, uh, if the roll-up will become higher than the, the maximum of the custom field. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Welcome. That answers. Good. Let's start. Amani, final. Oh no, let's stop recording, Steve.